Less lethal tools have a place, but when it comes time for lethal force, you have to not hesitate. Hi friends, welcome to today's bonus badge cam lesson here at Active Self Protection. With me as always, the host of the Ask Podcast, Mike Williver, and I'm your host, John Correa. And today's video comes to us from Los Angeles, California. Palm pepper spray has recently reformulated for even more effect when you bless the deserving with the hot sauce. Palm is what I use between a harsh word and a gun and encourage everyone to do likewise. Multiple 911 calls have come in to this dude who's threatening people in his apartment complex with a knife and he's got, you can see like a big pipe there, it looks kind of flexible that he's beating up cars and windows in the apartment complex with. See that dude wander by. So of course a bunch of 911 calls come in, several officers are going to respond, try to get this guy into custody. We're going to see the badge cams show up now and we can have audio on those. Let's listen in, it gets crazy. He's got something on his back, dude. Come here! Get your hands up! Show me your hands! Get ready to tase this me. guy! Get ready to tase this guy! Hey, back up! Back Sup. up! Back up! Sup. 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 You're gonna get tased! Show it's gonna hurt! Bro. Show me your hands and you get tased right now! Back up! No. He's got a knife. And we can, we can talk about this, man. We can talk about it. Hey, don't approach. Don't approach. Drop whatever you have. Drop whatever you have, man. Yeah, I got you. Drop whatever you have. Drop whatever you have, man. Fuck that. Drop whatever you have, man. I'm going to go down like a fucking G. Homie, what's up? Nah, nah, nah. Stop, stop, stop. Shot, shot, fire. Shot, fire. Drop whatever you have, man. It's not worth it. Nah, nah, nah. Shot, shot, fire. 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 Shot, they did get this guy into custody. Uh, if you go watch the original from LAPD, it shows them trying to render medical aid to him. I don't think it really added anything and was unnecessarily bloody in those things, so I didn't include it. They did try though, but it was ineffective. This guy did die of that one gunshot wound and we're gonna think about lessons. Hey, I wanna invite you to join us on our monthly online deep dive seminars. We do a Zoom seminar every single month. We cover different topics all the time. Our gold patron members, as well as firearms legal protection members, get to come for free, but anyone is welcome. Hit the link in the description. We'd love to have you. Call goes out, emotionally disturbed person here. I think that the private citizens here were probably right. Lock your doors and get the heck away from this guy and outsource your violence to the cops if you can. Absolutely agreed. Hey, and right here, hey, guy in the background, chew doing, get out of there. I, I'll never understand civilians, you know, hanging out, watching someone do crazy stuff. We saw it in a video recently, the guy sitting out in front of the ANPM with some guy running around with a knife, he just sat there and got himself stabbed for his trouble. Get out of there, right? Okay, so now look at him. He says, I got a knife, shoot me because I'm going to hit. Now listen, when somebody tells you, when they're talking at you like this, like this guy is, you've got to listen to what they say. Officers, hear me on this. He's letting you into his soul and he's letting you in right now on the fact that he is very likely to try to commit suicide by cop here because he's asking them to shoot him, telling him he's got a knife and telling him he is going to aggress on them. Believe them when they say that and take the steps you need to take quickly. 100%. We talk about means, opportunity, and intent. Those are, those are the three legs of the table that say, can I use deadly force? This gentleman has told him he has a knife. He has told him he has every intention on stabbing them or hitting them, quote unquote. And the intent is also very clearly established here. So uh, at, at this point, uh, deadly force would be acceptable. I don't think it's I don't think it's a have to just yet, but we're we're getting awfully close. And I say this every time, John. But even if you know someone's trying to get themselves killed by your hand, it doesn't mean they're any less dangerous. They're 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 going to escalate. Chances are they're going to escalate their activity until they get you to do what they what you want. They, excuse me, what they want you to do in this case is shoot. Well, and, and okay, I, I don't think that it was wrong for them to try to use the less lethal. I think it was actually right. They had a little space here, but I just wanted everybody Absolutely. to recognize, and the officers are particularly. Listen, when he tells you something, listen to that because that'll tell you what's going on inside his soul if he's at least somewhat lucid. Now, and what I really mean is, is those less lethals, you, you don't have time to pussyfoot around with them in this case. If you're gonna have a chance to use a less lethal on this guy, you have got to use it and get it ready and get it going now. So I think the officer having lethal cover, very, very good here, lets the other officers try something different. So because of course, they, they don't wanna shoot this guy, right? And here's the thing, 
He says, back up or I'm going to tase you and it's going to hurt. Do not threaten with a taser. I get it that, that you're like, look, I'm trying to get him to voluntarily, uh, you know, give up in this particular case. However, given that you already heard him say, you better shoot me because I'm going to hit and I have a knife. Don't threaten with the taser. Use it. Concur. I, I think we, we need to start getting away from uh, threatening to use any less lethal force. There's no point to it. As an officer, as a deputy, if you are where you are legally, uh, we're going to talk about you know how we lead up to using non-deadly force. If you are where you are legally, you have a legal reason to be there. If you've given a lawful command and that command has not been followed, you're good to go. If this person is going to be detained or arrested, you're good to go to use a taser. You're good to go to use, uh, you know, pepper spray or some, or, or in this case, the, the 40 millimeter, whatever the case may be, but threatening with it, especially this guy, John, these cops have probably been around for a while. I knew the minute I heard him speak, he, he does not want to be de-escalated. He's not going to be talked down off the ledge. He's not going to be reasoned with. He is determined to do what he's about to do. Well, and, and exactly right. So, so you can't de-escalate anybody. They can de-escalate themselves. You can give them off ramps. Now, I think one of the other things that we see here in this particular case is the fact that our perp, you know, he wants it and, and he wants this confrontation. Now, when the officer says, hey, let's get the 40 millimeter ready and going, that's what prompts him saying, oh no, because he knows they have a hard time reaching him, I think, with the taser when he's standing off just outside a taser range. But as soon as that 40 Mike Mike shows up, he goes, nope, it's time to go. And that's when he says, let's go, homie. So, so I, I'm not saying that he was wrong not to have it prepped early. I don't know what their SOPs are at LAPD in terms of when they can you know, put a round in the chamber of, of their 40 Mike. But man, you've got to recognize that's a critical moment when he may decide to press the action. One of those times, John, when I, I don't know their policy either, and I don't know what their policy is on you know, how, how the less lethal shotguns or the 40 millimeter, how they are cruiser ready, uh, if they have a round in the chamber normally or not. Shotguns, if you're driving around, guys, don't let don't have a round in the chamber. Not. That's a free yeah. phoning. Free, yeah, uh, that's just a, a, a little tidbit, a little extra. But I would have liked to have seen this 40 millimeter uh, up in an action sooner. I don't know why he waited until then to load it. I would assume earlier he had a taser on the guy, the, the officer on the left here with, with the green 40 millimeter. Uh, and I would like to have seen it loaded already and probably used by now. In addition, I, I wish they would get away from these single shot, uh, you know, 40 millimeter cannons, for lack of a better term. They, they may, I'm pretty sure they make one with a cylinder that holds like six or eight. And, you know, a couple of those are sometimes needed. So I would prefer to get away from these single shot ones because getting that thing reloaded under stress is probably almost impossible, especially with someone charging at you. Now we're gonna stop it here next because this is actually where our officer makes the decision to fire. He actually did not fire yet. It says shot fired there, but the shot has not broken yet. This is actually about a half second before it does. This is when the decision to fire is made. So recognize that when the stimulus comes in, it takes your, your brain about a half a second or a quarter second to, to say, I gotta go, and then another quarter second to program the action, send it to the body and the body to do that. So about a half second before. And you can see absolutely justified in this particular case, this guy has a knife up, he is advancing, the 40 mic is not ready yet, the taser when somebody's charging you with a knife is not an appropriate tool. The, the firearm was the appropriate tool here and you gotta know when to use it and this officer did. I can imagine some people watching this and asking themselves, why didn't the officers back up a little, give the guy more room? And it looks to me like their back is to a sidewalk into a street. So there's nowhere for them to go. No, they can't keep backing up and backing up because you don't know who's going to get in between you and this guy and end up being a hostage or end up getting stabbed or end up getting shot by you by accident because you're being assaulted. So uh, concur, it would have been better to have the 40 millimeter loaded. Uh, it would have been better to have a little bit more room. But in this case, you know, the bad guy, he makes the calls. He stops where he wants to stop and he moves when he wants to move and you just have to respond to it as quickly as you can. Yeah, and notice here, a good high center chest hit, great marksmanship by the officer, not specifically very far away in this case, but, but notice that it changed this guy's behavior very quickly. Generally speaking, if you get an anatomically significant hit in the high center chest on somebody, you get the pumps and the pipes, it will change their behavior. And, and notice how quickly it did change this guy's behavior. Now, if you get a peripheral hit, you get a non, you know, high center chest hit, you get a ch shot in the guts or legs or something like that, that may not change behavior. But unless he's wearing body armor or something like that, this kind of hit will almost certainly change his behavior, which is what you're trying to do when you shoot him. Agreed, but I wanna caution our viewers, don't count on that, you know what I mean? Don't count on the, the first shot um, having the fibs factor this intense. This is absolute fibs. Uh, squared right here. He's he's the fudge I've been shot. So 
if you are a defender, if you're an officer, make sure that you don't count on that first shot, even if it's a good shot. Don't count on that stopping the threat. You got to assess and you got to follow up. And I think in this case, as John said, clearly this guy is changing shape and his behavior is stopping very quickly. And, and you know, absolutely right, Mike. And, and thanks for that, you know, clarification. I agree with you 100%. I do also think it looks to me this officer is carrying a, a higher end gun. That's not a department issued gun that he's carrying right there, which tells me he's probably a training junkie, which tells me he probably has the presence of mind to know that, that when he's resetting his trigger, he's still seeing the target and, and he has the time to, to hesitate the quarter second to a third of a second to see if he needs to be shot again. And, and that's important. Again, we're not looking at our sights as they come back down. We're looking and seeing, does he need to be shot again in our follow through? Follow through is that last fundamental that says, I recover my sights, recover my trigger, see what the target is doing. Do I need to shoot it again? And, and I think this officer did a pretty darn fine job of that all the way through and deserves, I, I think, commendation for knowing his place and doing his thing on that. Now, dude goes down, okay, they do try to go get him help. That's gonna be very difficult in that moment because you know uh, he's still got that knife on him. Now let's watch the taser here. I think this is interesting because watch how long the taser takes. He starts making that, the shot breaks, and here's where the taser finally deploys. And thankfully, the officer who had the lethal cover was there, and this is why you've got to have lethal cover if you are on taser against a deadly tool like a knife because that taser was so late it might not have had effect had the guy not been shot no we have the luxury of sitting back and picking this video apart you know piece by piece in the comfort of our homes however i'm just going to say this i'd like to see more lethal cover and maybe just one if you have three people i think two people should probably be on lethal and one person on less lethal in this particular situation Reason being is you have an extremely deadly threat. You have a determined attacker. He's way too close to you at this point. You can't back up anymore. And there's no telling that that first shot's necessarily going to put him down like it did. Fortunately, it stopped his behavior immediately. Had it not, it could have been a different outcome. Yeah, absolutely could have been a different outcome. Thankfully, again, this officer, you know, great marksmanship, knew his fundamentals, was able to get that there and do what he needed to do in the moment. So then, of course, we're going to see them here when once he goes down, they, he still has the knife there. So, so he's still got the knife sitting right next to them, which is why they kind of slow their roll for a minute here. They did eventually get the knife away from him, try to get him the medical help that he needs. And, and I just want to say this as kind of a closing thought here. Of course, we don't want to see a private citizen shot by the police. That's not what we want to see. But I do want to say at the end here, who's responsible for that in this case? Well, this guy is responsible for that. The officers didn't want to do that. He's threatening everybody in that apartment complex. They respond to protect the public. He decides he wants to, to be shot by the police and does what he needs to do in order to make that happen. We don't blame the police for that. We blame this guy for that. Maybe even say, hey, we need to do something in our society that people stop choosing this kinds of thing. And, and even so, I do think these officers did a pretty darn good job and covered their ass.